and welcome back to Why This Film, the podcast where we pick a movie from your childhood, rewatch it, and then have a chat about it. My name's Emily Slade, and welcome back. We watched it so many times before, and now you're gonna watch it again. But it's been so many years since you last saw it, and now you show it to your friends, and they're like, What? What am I watching? Why? What? Is Why? This? Why this film? And this week I am joined by Tessa. Hello, Tessa. Hello there. Hello, and her chosen movie is Moppet Treasure Island. The IMDb breakdown is very simply The Muppet's Twist on the Classic Tale, which is fair enough. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> yeah, easy enough. <laughs> sums it up. Um, so, what's your relationship with this movie? Uh, so the movie came out in 96 and I can't remember if I saw it right after it came out. I mean, I know it was already on video cause I found it at the video rental store, Amazing. but I know by the time I had seen it, I already loved the Muppets. I had already read treasure Island. So I was really excited to see it. And I just fell in love with it the first time I watched it and would watch it over and over and over and yeah. over again <laughs> for years. <laughs> so, um, cause Christmas Carol came out before. So I, had you seen that? Yeah. Yeah, because I don't um, remember if I had seen it yet, but I know it came out a few years before, so yeah. I probably had at that point. Yeah, um, we we had this randomly taped off the television. It must have been on mm-hmm. sort of one of the channels at one point, and we just recorded it onto VHS uh, back in the good old days. Um, <laughs> so the first like three minutes had always been cut off, so it came in halfway through that first song. So it was only when I got it on DVD years later. Um, that I saw the like whole movie for the first time, <laughs> um, so that was really fun. But again, like this was this was actually one of the first Muppet movies I saw. Um, it took me years to get round to Muppet Christmas Carol because it used to frighten me a lot, so oh. I really <laughs> put it off. But um, yeah, oh my god, I love this movie so much. Mm-hmm. Like it, so it it will just dive straight in from the very beginning. Um, the opening is so epic. Yeah. I think this movie really, like, I blame for how much I love pirates today. Yes! I agree! It's so true. It, um, it really captures that sort of romantic, um, element, I guess, of piracy, um, in a way that you wouldn't then see until Pirates of the Caribbean. And even then, like, this is so much more hardcore with it with um an excellent cast um a very british cast i don't know if they were just trying to stick to robert louis stevenson who i think was scottish um but yeah and very very good you said you've read the original novel of treasure island Yeah, and I mean, it really, you know, of course the Muppets add so much to it, Mm -hmm. but really nothing is missing from the story. Like, it's all there. It's a great way to tell the story to kids, you know? It really is. It's such an exciting story, and they really, really do it justice. I always say this about the Muppet interpretations. They're so much closer to the literature, the original literature, than a lot of adaptations of movie, book movies. Um, Yeah, totally. So, kudos to them. Uh, This began a lifelong ongoing love of Tim Curry. <laughs> Same. <laughs> yeah. um, a lot of people cite Rocky Horror as his sexiest role, but I would argue there is a strong case uh, here as Long John Silver. Um, I'm so with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, the introduction of Kevin Bishop. Did you ever follow Kevin Bishop? He plays Jim Hawkins. You know, I didn't really look into him until I was kind of like looking back and doing a little research on it for the podcast. And I saw how much he did, like he had his own show and everything. And Mm. yeah, I really had no idea. But it looks like he was really successful after this movie. Yeah, I I remember watching his sort of skit show uh, that would be on like Friday Mm. evenings uh, with Karen Gillan as well, who's now most well known for God, I guess, Guardians of the Galaxy, Jumanji, like she's huge now. Um, And this was one of the first things I saw her on. And this was his first feature film role um which is amazing and he he's just a wonderful Jim Hawkins um yeah he's perfect for the part so perfect and his voice his little singing voice is so cute (laughs) um 
And so similar to Christmas Carol, I guess, he sort of hangs out with Gonzo and Rizzo, who uh, sort of take us through the main story. And it's, it's just done so well. It's so clever and funny. Um, and he works at the Admiral Bembo, which has Jennifer Saunders as the um, landlady. And the book <laughs> yeah, she's mom. great too. Oh my she's gosh. She's so good. Is she's she big in America? She's so good. Is she big in America? No, um, I mean... I... I'm trying to think of what else she's been in because she did look familiar to me, like rewatching it now, older. Mm. Um, but I, her name isn't particularly big here. Yeah, because um, over here in Britain, she's like a huge sort of. She had uh, she had a, a sketch show with Dawn French called French and Saunders. She wrote Ab mm. Fab, which was like a huge sitcom. Um, possibly the most American thing she's done, although she's in quite a lot. Um, she was the fairy godmother in Shrek Two. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so that's sort of... But it, it's interesting. And then um, Billy Bones, who's a pirate that's mm. sort of at the inn, is played by Billy Connolly. Do you know him at all? Uh, as I have gotten older, I've gotten to know him. I didn't then when I was a kid at all. Yeah, yeah. Same to an extent. I, 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 think, I think it's so interesting that this um, primarily... Well, the Muppets are American, and yet the cast of this movie is like almost entirely British, other than the Muppets. Yes. Um, so it, it's interesting for me. I'm like, oh, wow, look, it's all of these huge names. Um, but I wonder mm -hmm. in America if they just seem sort of faceless in comparison. Yeah, I think especially, you know, for kids watching it, we really wouldn't have known any of those names. But even mm -hmm. for adults, they weren't really huge American names. Yeah, especially in, like, 96. Um, right. Much bigger now, I guess. Um, but yeah, oh my god, feel free to just like jump in with whatever you want to talk about because I just, I will just gush about how <laughs> funny. <laughs> um, yeah, totally. Um, I think one of my favorite parts of the movie is how they like are so um, self aware that it is a movie. You know, yes. I mean, they mentioned several times like, oh, this is a kid's movie or, you know, whatever. Like they break that fourth wall. Yeah. But they're still telling the story. And it's so funny too because it's like, you know, all of the Muppets are actors, you know, they're the Muppets playing these characters, yeah. but the humans are like really supposed to be these characters, you know, so yeah. it's like that weird, it's almost like a meta kind of thing, but it's so true. it works so well. It's so cleverly done. Um, they do it a lot at the beginning. There's a, you're right, that that, that was one of my favorite jokes when, um, when Billy Bones first dies. <laughs> um, yeah. And Rizzo's like, he died, but this is meant to be a kid's movie. Um, I quoted that so many times. And then later on, when they get onto the ship, the Hispaniola, Rizzo starts doing these rat tours, which essentially like yeah. gets these rats on as if it's like a, a fancy, luxurious cruise. And um, these rats are acting almost as if they are on a film set. Like, there's even a bit where they walk past in the jungle where they're like, and here's where they shot uh, the actual jungle location of the movie Muppet Treasure Island. And they're all like, wow, and like taking photographs. And it's just, I can't really think of anything similar, uh, especially around that time, that was doing that sort of fourth wall breaking humor. And it just, it works so well. Um, Especially it, because they don't do it like throughout with every character, you know, it's just kind of sprinkled in here and there. So yeah. it, I don't even know how it works as well as it does. It's but so it really true. Does. It's so true. It almost shouldn't work because some characters are, are very, like, all of the human characters seem to be very seriously in this movie as these characters, mm -hmm. as you say. The Muppets are very aware that they are playing characters, but like, mm -hmm. Like, Kermit never makes reference to the fact that he's in a film. But, like, <sighs> Rizzo and Gonzo do. Like, it's funny how they've been assigned these sort of roles and some are allowed to do that and some aren't. And yeah, it's fascinating. It's so, it's so cleverly written and so cleverly done. Um, God, it's so funny. It's so good. Um, <laughs> It, sort it of always made me wonder, too, how much of it was scripted or if they kind of, you know, improvised a little bit here and there. Because there's so many just little quips that I'm like, how did they even think of that? You yeah. Know? yeah, it's so true. And as most of the cast are literal, like, 
comedic actors. I wouldn't have been surprised if um, some of the stuff was genuinely improvised on set or whatever. Yeah. But it it it's so good. It's only an hour and a half and it so much happens and it's so exciting and the narrative is so well told. Mm -hmm. um, they managed to get almost all of the Muppets in there. Something I did read and you probably read it too, which was quite sweet and sad. Um, Jim Henson had died. I think he died sort of early 90s. Um, yeah. And Rolf the dog was the Muppet that was most similar to his personality. So they didn't want to include Rolf as a major character because they wanted... I don't know, they like so, like out of respect for Jim Henson, so he's just very briefly seen in the pub oh, wow. at the beginning, um, which is quite mm -hmm. sad and sweet. But um, you've got Kermit the Frog here as um, Captain Smollett with one of the greatest movie entrances. Like, it's it's so up there. <laughs> it's one of the yeah. Um, it's so dramatic. You've got Sam the Eagle as the first mate, and he's, like, getting everyone on board, and he's like, oh, my God, the captain's coming, and it keeps cutting to this, like, horse-drawn carriage that's, like, racing through the streets <laughs> of Brighton and um, charging up to the port and to the ship, and uh, the, the doors fling open, and everyone's like... <gasps> And this like oh, like grumpy looking old man steps out, and the music's like <laughs> boom, and then he just takes his hat off, se steps aside, and the music's like bow bow, and Kermit the Frog's there like hello everybody, and you're just like oh my yes. goodness, <laughs> it's so good. And um, I hadn't seen it in a while actually, this movie. So it, it um, you were saying before we uh, started recording a while ago that um, you were going to see how many words you could remember from it was it the I would entire say it was script definitely the majority yeah. <laughs> i was holding myself back from quoting them out loud yeah, yeah, it is so quotable though it's so it's so quotable um when billy bones dies rizzo's like we are standing in a room with a dead guy just everything's yeah. so memorable um you've got fuzzy bear as oh, squire trelawney but it's not it's interesting, it's not Squire Trelawney. He plays Squire Trelawney's son, who I don't believe is in the book. Um, and he's got a character called Mr Bimbo that lives in his finger, um, which is still very funny to this day. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, that's the sort of... Oh, and then you've got... Um, oh, what's the scientist called? Him and Beaker playing Honeydew. Honeydew yes. and Beaker, yeah. <laughs> Um, and they play uh, the doctor, and then Beak is like a made-up assistant. Um, and then you've got lots of sort of new Muppets, almost invented for pirate jokes, I guess. Yeah. I was laughing, actually. Um, a friend of mine was watching it with me when I was re-watching, and I was like, you know, what went through their heads when they designed some of these Muppets? Because there's some, like you said, that were, you know, brand new or we hadn't really seen before. And I was like, what even creatures are some of these supposed yeah. to be? Yeah, there's like one Muppet who looks just like a stereotype of, almost like a caricature of uh, Prince Charles. Like a very sort yeah. of ridiculously stereotyped Britain with like huge horse teeth and like a long nose uh -huh. and glasses and then you've got all the various Toms, dead Tom live Tom, <laughs> yeah. sick Tom um, uh, some throwaway gags but then you've got ones like Sweetums who I think is a sort of ones that turn up in the background every now and then but you're right there's yeah. ones that um, yeah very very strange designs um, the songs, I don't think there's a dud song at all. I think they are no, all... they're, they're all so fun and they all fit in so well. I mean, mm. they're all Hans Zimmer, so it's not surprising. Are <laughs> they? I never well, knew but... that. Yeah. That makes so much sense. <laughs> <laughs> Which is your favorite song? Oh, that's a really tough one. Mm. Um... I have to say, I love the opening. Um, it totally gets stuck in my head every time. But also, Cabin Fever is just so fun. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. So the opening is um, Shiver My Timbers. Is that what it's called? 
Yeah, well, I don't know if that's the title, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, as, um, and it's when they're sort of uh, flashbacking to when Flint is burying the original treasure, and it's a very piratey song. It's mm-hmm. uh, very epic and very sort of, you've got all of these like creatures in the jungle and the desert like singing along, and um, it's very, very, very memorable and very good. Yeah. Um, one of my favourite is the next song, which uh, is sung by Jim, Gonzo, and Rizzo, which is Something Better, and it's his like. Um, I want song, if you will, the Disney yeah. sort of like, there's got to be something better than this. And it's mm-hmm. just so sweet. And like, yeah. his little girly <laughs> voice and the two of them making like jokes around it. It's, um, it was like my anthem when I was a young teenager. <laughs> I was like, God, this song's really speaking to me. Um, <laughs> it's adorable. Uh, Cabin Fever is an absolute banger. Like, it's just, mm-hmm. uh, a set piece all on the ship and it's just it's like it doesn't forward the plot in any way and it's perfect it's brilliant I love it yeah <laughs> that's what that was another one uh my friend that was watching with me she was saying you know she remembered the movie but not maybe at least as well as I did but when that song came on she was like oh my god I remember this so much from like a preview <laughs> yeah. on another video oh <laughs> wow yeah it's such a little earworm it's so so good um Sailing for Adventure is another nice one. Um, it's sort of when they first uh, get off onto the ocean and they sing about sailing for adventure, basically. And um, <laughs> again, it's just, they're all so epic. They don't um, waste time with any of these. They're not sort of half assed half-hearted songs. They're all uh, huge songs for whatever reason. Um, and then Tim Curry gets to sing a song uh called <laughs> professional pirate and it's it's brilliant and it's full of these jokes that mm-hmm. the 90s were very good or bad depending on your opinion of it for this where they would put in i think it was an attempt to sort of appeal to the adult audience that would have mm-hmm. to be watching it they would put in these references to other movies that um it, to this day, I haven't seen, and I still get confused. That sort of <laughs> Scarface, Taxi Driver, um, that sort of vibe. So in this one, he's yeah. like, I could have been a contender, which... Is that Rocky? <laughs> I, I still don't know. Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> I should know that reference. <laughs> but, like, it's there, and I knew as a kid to laugh at it, because uh-huh. because they laugh at it in the movie. Um <laughs> But it took me years before I was like, oh, the, the, oh, okay, they're doing like a thing. Um, yeah. And yeah, like so many movies had those, uh, you looking at me, do you feel lucky? Like all of those little references that mm-hmm. as a six-year-old Brit in the 90s, I was just like, whoosh, straight over my head. <laughs> um, yeah, I think as a kid I was like, okay, I know that's like a reference to something. Yeah. I've heard that quote before. <laughs> yeah, know, yeah. <laughs> No idea what it's from. Still don't to this day. Um, <laughs> blah, blah. Uh, is that all of the songs? Um, oh, oh no! There's also the uh, Boom Shakalaka song yes. <laughs> introducing Miss Piggy. Oh, she doesn't turn up until like forty-five minutes into the movie, and it's such a good wait because she's like teased a yeah. little bit beforehand, and then she turns up and she's Benjamin Gunn, and in the book it's Ben Gunn who was. Um, marooned by flint and she's this fabulous um lady pig who's sort of uh (laughs) contracted the local tribe to sort of be her people and um god her entrance is so funny where like it's like boom shakalaka and it's like this huge song and she comes through on this elephant in this covered in flowers and then she's just like come flaubert and then like (laughs) falls down the stairs Perfect, perfect Muppetry. And then yep. her and Captain Smollett, i.e. Kermit, obviously, have a past. And um, they sing the song, Love Let Us Here, which is mm-hmm. a cute song. But what I find it so funny is that it's it's a very sweet little song. Um, and it's sung by Kermit and Miss Piggy when they're, like, hanging to their deaths, basically. Yeah. Um, but then it's also the credits song because the 90s would do this sort of like they would take the most famous song and they would right. get Celine Dion to do a version for the credits or something. You see it in a lot of Disney's and most of the time you can kind of get away with it. There's something about when it comes on in the credits and it's gone from like, 
Love, let us hear it. To like these two muppets with silly voices, and suddenly these people are like, Love, let us hear. And you're right. like, Oh my god, what are you doing? <laughs> it's so funny. Um, I think that's I think that's all of the songs. And as I say, there's not usually there's at least one that you're like, eh, I could skip it. Yeah, but there isn't. Here. I remember as a kid, Love Let Us Here was kind of that song for me. I yeah. was like, okay, like this is a little boring. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. Love isn't interesting. Let's get back to pirates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's, that's so true. I think I had a similar point of view back when I was a kid. And then um, and then I rediscovered it as an adult. Like uh, in Cinderella, Disney Cinderella, the um, So This Is Love. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> used to skip the hell out of that. And then suddenly something happened, like puberty hit. And I was like, this is the <laughs> nicest song in this movie. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the, you'll have to tell me your favorite quote as well, because one of the things that my sister and I, because we used to watch this all the time, used to quote is, it's just a tiny random little bit where you come away from the ship for a moment for no real reason. And some of the rats that are there on a cruise are like water skiing. And there's one driving the boat, one in the boat and one water skiing. And he goes, I'm getting tired. And the driver's like, what did he say? And the woman's like, he said go faster. And he's like, I'm getting tired. And that's it. That's the joke. And we still quote <laughs> yeah, that to this that. day. <laughs> it's um, it's my favorite part of the entire movie. And I'm literally going to put that out there now. So what is your most memorable quote? Oh, that's tough. Yeah. Um, I'd have to say there are a lot of parts in the beginning um, whenever Blind Pew comes to give Billy Bones the black spot. Like, there's a lot of moments in there that I really love to quote all the time. Like, <laughs> when he thinks uh, Jim is a girl and he's yeah. like, dig me to her. And, he, and Jim's like, you're in the wrong place and I'm not a girl. You know, <laughs> yeah. all those little moments. Um, when, when Billy's dying and he's like, Jim, Jimmy, Jim, 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 yeah. Jim, 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 you know. I think those were a lot of my favorite parts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not Jim, 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 Jim. He's Jim, 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 Jim. It's so clever. It's um, I think I always preferred it to Christmas Carol because even though Christmas Carol is so iconic and obviously there's an excuse to watch it every year because it's seasonal, it was almost more serious in a way, and maybe it's that the story was more serious, but um. This just this was just so much more fun and there were so much more jokes in it and I really appreciated that as a kid. Um, yeah, I agree. And it, I mean, you know, it's full of adventure too. I think that's extra exciting for a kid too. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I love too. I mean, I think it really holds up as an adult. Like, you know, of course, I loved it anyway. But I think mm-hmm. if I were an adult watching it without having seen it as a kid, like it's it's crazy how much the humor just applies to kids and adults. You know, yes. like there's so many things that are like, sure, they're meant for kids, but then they have like the grown up jokes. So everybody likes it. But it's like, it's the same jokes that are funny for both kids it's and so adults. True. It's amazing. How they do that. The, the Muppets ride that line so well of that sort of almost vaudevillian style of comedy where it's just like appealing to everyone. It's just, it's just factually funny in a way. Yeah. And um, this movie is such a good showcase for it. Um, you're absolutely right. Like, yeah, you're, it's so true. I think if I were to show any of my sort of friends now this movie and they hadn't seen it before, I can't, I can't see what you would have a problem with it. Like it, <laughs> it's well paced, it's well cast, it's mm-hmm. well acted, the songs are great, it's funny. Like, Tim Curry's there dressed as a sexy pirate. Like, what is that not like? <laughs> exactly. Um, I've just remembered another quote. Like, this podcast is just going to be me quoting Muppet Treasure Island. <laughs> um, when, right at the end, they've captured Long John Silver and they've got him up against the wall and they're like, kill Jim and you'll have to kill me. Kill Gonzo and you'll have to kill me. And then Rizzo's there and, like, five of them do that and it's like, Rizzo goes... <laughs> kill Squire Trelawney and Mr. Bimbo and you'll have to negotiate strenuously. <laughs> it's yeah. just it's just brilliant and it's yeah, it's just such great humor. But yeah, I I had very few notes for it because I was just so enjoying watching it so much. So please like feel free to sort of just talk about 
whatever you want, really. Like, just gush. Um, anything you found <laughs> uh, well, out? One really funny thing, because I was looking at just, you know, little facts about it and stuff, trying to learn more about it, too. Mm-hmm. And I found out that, um, you know, when they're on the island and they first meet the natives, you know, and the one who's kind of in charge introduces himself as Spa Am. Yeah, yeah. And I guess the company Spam tried to sue them for that, and they got away with it because they came back with them with, well, you don't want your product associated with real pork? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So they dropped the lawsuit. (laughs) That's amazing. Oh, my God. Yeah, again, never got that as a kid. Never got the... (laughs) So many over the top of my head. Um. I think originally they wanted Polly to be a parrot and to mm-hmm. flirt with Long John Silver. Um, but then they were like, that got really weird really quickly. So we changed <laughs> it to a male parrot called Steve. Um, but then eventually that all got scrapped for um, Polly the Lobster, which is a, a male as well. And very funny. Again, it has a quote that took me like several viewings before I... And it's interesting because I, I I, haven't enjoyed this very modern meta um, thing of, that Disney are trying to do. Where like in Zootopia, the Idris Elba buffalo is all like, life isn't some fairy tale where you sing a song and everything gets better. Let it go. And when in Moana, he's like... Oh, you're a princess. You have a psy- You have a talking psychic, and you sing a lot. You're a princess, or whatever. I've always been like, oh, like shut up. We get it. Enchanted was good, but like drop it. Um, <laughs> but it, it's it's here in 1996. Polly says, um, talking parrots, pirates. What's next? A uh, singing, dancing mouse with his own amusement park. Yeah. And it took me years to like clock onto what he was saying. So <laughs> yeah, I don't think I got that as a kid either. No. Um, and it's a very early example of Disney being, trying that meta vibe out. And it just, I think, I just, Disney, if you're listening, I just think you need to stop while you're ahead. Because, like, we, <laughs> we get it. Like, you love, you think people love yourself, r- like, ripping into yourself. But, like, only if it's then surrounded by the same warmth and charm. That's why Enchanted was so good. Um, and this just gets away with it because it's just one throwaway line in a very... Right, right different in a in a tone to, place tonally that works um mm. but yeah uh so did you you wouldn't have seen this in cinemas then no i i mean i was about probably six or seven when it came out um but i know that i i saw it at the video rental store um because I just remember, like, my parents would take me there every weekend, mm-hmm. and I always wanted to rent the same thing over and over, <laughs> yeah. and I, I think this must have been, like, you know, out on display as a new arrival or something like that, and I was like, yeah. oh, this sounds fun, and then, you know, as soon as I saw it, that was the new one that I rented over and over yeah. again every weekend. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, no, definitely. We had a similar thing. We would go to the, the video store and rent something every every week, but yeah, no, this one randomly was... um as I say, recorded on video, which again means that um, the credits cut off quite quickly because it was sharing, we would then, it had taped on it, like, I don't know, like The Adventures of Winnie the Pooh or something afterwards. Mm -hmm. Um, So, again, there's a bit during the credits where you find out where Long John Silver's gone because he escapes the boat at the end with the treasure And you find out that he's in one of the lifeboats that has holes in it. So you see him sink and he's swimming towards the island. And I always just thought as a kid, like, oh, and I guess he's on the island now, whatever. But they confirm it in the credits, um, which I've literally only seen twice uh, since I've had it on DVD, where he's talking to one of the sort of stone faces um, who's like telling him really bad jokes. And he's just sort of sat (laughs) on the island suffering. Yeah. But that's that's a really cute little moment that I, I never had from childhood as well. Um, the set pieces are just gorgeous. Like these old towns, like Victorian mm-hmm. towns and um, the, the boat itself. Um, and then when you get to the island, like everything's just so beautiful. 
and yeah they put a lot of work and money into it I mean yeah. I think the budget I looked up was like 30 million or something like oh, that wow. so they yeah they put a lot of time and effort into that yeah good I'm so glad like I'm so glad that people are willing to invest in these things because they they do produce such good content I mean I'll say the the Muppet Wizard of Oz is probably my least favorite but even that isn't bad it's just that I prefer other ones um but yeah I think just, you know, the Muppets retelling all these classic stories is such, like, a good, you know, it was before we really had, like, Wishbone or, you know, any other retellings for kids, you know, so it was just a fun way to, like, get those stories out to kids and the adults liked it too, yeah. And get them to, like, it made me then want to read the books of the stuff I'd Mm -hmm. watched to see, to, like, uh, revisit these characters again and um, it... Yeah, it's you're absolutely right. Like it's such a wonderful, wonderful way to do it. And um, as I say again, it's so much better than a lot of genuine adaptations. Like as much as I don't like the yeah. Muppet Wizard of Oz, it was better than Oz the Great and Powerful. Like <laughs> yeah. and more accurate to the sort of book as well. Like they are so good. Um, and Tim Curry is so good in this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this was, you know, definitely my first introduction to him. Mm-hmm. And I think anything I watched ever since, I was like, but that's Long John Summer. Yeah, you know, that's how I always thought of him for the rest of my life. <laughs> Literally, because I think around the same time I was watching Annie and his rooster in that. Um, uh-huh. But even then I didn't clock because he looks so different. I never clocked that it was right. the same person. Um, so for years, and Fern Gully as well, he was the voice in that, and I never clocked that it was the same person. It's so versatile. Yeah. But it's so funny because he does really sound the same pretty much every role he does, <laughs> you know, but yeah. still. <laughs> He's so iconically Tim Curry. Like, you can always tell it's him. Um, mm-hmm. he, he does such a good job. I love him so much. I mean, even just his laugh alone just <laughs> makes me laugh. Yes! <laughs> And he was having such a good time on this set as well. I read that he, um, he'd he always wanted to work with the Muppets and he sees this as one of his favourite film roles, which I think is so sweet. And yeah. he is, like, he's playing this wonderfully, like... Because what's interesting about uh, the Treasure Island story that the Disney also explored when they did Treasure Planet is this um, father-son, almost brotherly relationship between Long John and Jim. And even though they're meant to be enemies, they're also very much friends. And it's quite complex and grey, uh, especially for like a yeah. children's story. Um, and he plays it so well as that charming, yet manipulative, yet loving. And mm-hmm. you believed their relationship, but you also believed that he was like a terrible person and you kind of didn't mind because like he's not going to hurt Jim because yeah. he likes him. Um, so, so good. So his main three cronies were Polly the Lobster, Clueless Morgan, who was like a goat, and then... Yeah like the swamp thing like what yeah whatever he was I'm not really sure and he was called something as well like something incredibly vague and odd like like thing or something like yeah I can't remember what his name was no he was so um he was genuinely just like a a bunch of seaweed with eyes (laughs) like it was very strange um but also distinctive very clever um just like if you haven't watched this movie like it just I love the Muppets and there are some like I wouldn't if you've only ever seen like the 2010 was it reboot like literally called the Muppets with um yeah not the same not not the same vibe at all however Muppets Most Wanted is up there as one of the greatest (laughs) Muppet movies ever made um but this is definitely number one Mm-hmm. hands down yeah for me too mm-hmm. it's got such a wonderful atmosphere I'm surprised there isn't um, and maybe there is I don't know maybe there was back in the 90s uh, that Disney hadn't because Disney bought them up it's a lot earlier than I think they did I always think they did it when they rebooted it with Amy Adams but um, they'd owned them since Christmas Carol which was like 92 
Well, they, I, cause I had looked this up too. I was curious about it. They had distributed them, um, for Christmas oh. Carol and treasure Island, but they didn't actually own them until a few years later, because I guess right. when they were talking, um, to Jim Henson about it, you know, they were planning on then buying them out. And then once he died, that mm-hmm. kind of didn't happen for a little while. Yeah. So they were distributing their movies without actually owning them for a little while. Oh, okay. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Cause yeah, I was always very confused about when, they actually bought them, but also you do see the Disney logo before Christmas Carol and, and Muppet Treasure Island as well. Um, so that then makes sense as to why I was going to go on to say that uh, I was surprised they didn't make like a, a, a ride out of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have loved a little like dinghy boat ride going round the sort of <laughs> yeah. Caribbean sort of... Wherever, wherever they're meant to be, where are they meant to be? I now just associate pirates with the Caribbean, thanks to Disney. <laughs> That's true. Um, um, I don't know. I don't know if it ever really specifically says. No. But I know it, they say they're sailing, like, you know, southwest or whatever, but yeah. I don't know that they ever really mention where they're going specifically. Yeah, it's very true. And I guess, just somewhere hot and nice with beaches. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the the characters, the non... Well, even the Muppet characters, but especially the 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 human characters are so well fleshed out like they're able to give us these three-dimensional characters that we genuinely care about in a matter of about five minutes just from very simple small conversations and very strong acting I don't know how old Kevin Bishop was but he hit puberty halfway through so they had to dub his voiceover so he's (laughs) gonna be (laughs) (laughs) he's gonna be around sort of 12 13 and um he's very good he's very very good in this like yeah when long john uh he he asks him to find the north star and he gets out his compass like oh that's easy i'll use my compass and he takes it and hangs it over the board like ah yeah but what if you don't have your compass and then the performance from kevin bishop where he's like please that was my father's it's all i have of him please please give it back and all the follow-up surrounding that was um so truthful and so genuine and even as a kid I would clock that as like oh that's good acting um (laughs) yeah (laughs) and it's not that you would expect a Muppet movie to have bad acting but maybe you would maybe the back of your mind is like oh you know it's just dumb fun with the Muppets but I think because they take the time to get in these wonderful cast members and really care about the script and the story and getting these truthful performances out of these people it's what makes every single thread of this movie come together to make it such a successful hour and a half thing. Because movies these days are like three and a half hours and nothing happens in them and I don't care about any of the characters. (laughs) Exactly. I sound so old. It's like, back in my day, the movies were good. (laughs) But, like, they were. They really, really were. Kids' movies especially, they really... Some of them didn't. But some of them really tried. And the Muppets... The Muppets were up there completely. Yeah, I think that's what kind of makes them stand apart, too, is, you Mm. know, those great performances given not only by, like, the Muppets themselves, you know, like the puppeteers or whatever, but, yeah, the human actors, and it's just, it takes it to another level. (laughs) Definitely, because they so easily could have just gotten in, like, any old person and have them have any old dialogue, and it would have, you know, it would have bumped up the run time to an hour and a half, and they could have called it a day, but... It's it's so good. It's so detailed and 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 wonderful. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, such a shame that Jim Henson died. And I know that sort of seems obvious to say, but um, just like think what I mean. And a lot of stuff has happened. You know, we've got a new Dark Crystal and all mm-hmm. of that sort of thing. But he just he was such a pioneer. Um, yeah, so tragic. my notes say just yeah it's mainly just hearts i'm not even gonna lie (laughs) (laughs) um and it's that sort of mix of uh contemporary with uh uh trying to stay in the world of the movie that the muppets Mm -hmm. do so well and they do it in christmas carol as well um yeah and they do it here beautifully, where he asks, uh, where did you get that gold necklace, the one made of Spanish doubloons? And she answers, shopping channel. 
Yeah. <laughs> Again, a joke I did not get when I was like 10. I was like, what? Okay, I'm going to laugh because I feel like you're meant to laugh here. And then when right. I grew up, I was like, ah, I get it. Like, yeah. it's just such a unique movie the way that, like you said, they're able to, you know, compare or uh, combine the modern day with the world of the movie, take mm-hmm. you out of it, like separate that fourth wall. But it just all works so well. And it's just, it makes everybody laugh no matter what age you are. You 100%. know? 100%. 100%. I. I really hope that they um, bring it back into cinemas one day. Oh, I would love that. <laughs> like, I know the 20-year anniversary is past now, but, um, yeah, I think kids deserve to see it. They deserve to be introduced to the story in this way and mm-hmm. see what might be some of their favourite characters, what with the resurgence of the Muppets um, as a thing, it, doing this kind of stuff. It's, yeah... Yeah, I mean, I would love for kids nowadays to get to see all the old Muppet movies because, you know, like you said, the Muppets came back and stuff, and it was a little different. Uh, Muppet Babies is back. I haven't personally watched it. I don't know how different it is, but... Oh, God, I remember Muppet Babies. (laughs) Good times. Yeah, I mean, they almost, almost never died. Um, Because they had the Muppet show back in the sort of 70s, was it? I think so. And then, yeah, and then they started making movies. I haven't seen any of the sort of uh, Muppets go to Manhattan. Um, but I've, I've seen a couple of the older ones. And then these... I've seen some of those newer ones, too. I mean, they mm. I will say they're not as good as the old ones. But, no. you know, they still stand up. They're still... They haven't changed them too much yet at that point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm less... Like, I hope that the Muppets will go on to have a long and happy life and maybe maybe they'll resurge this we're in such a throwback time at the moment where we're all so obsessed with the 90s that hopefully they'll pick up some more literary classics and with the likes of sort of little women coming to the cinemas that sort of thing maybe they'll think hey let's take the Muppets let's take all like what three female Muppets that we have (laughs) Um, one that was literally created for Muppet babies otherwise there's only like two um and try and bring some sort of female-led literary adaptation of a Muppet movie. How cool would that be? Like, I am in full support of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's really hope. Um, Disney, Heads, if you're listening, get on it. Give us another yes. <laughs> literary We'll all adaptation. watch it and we'll bring our kids. <laughs> yes, 100%. A Lorna Dune with the Muppets or something, or kidnapped with the Muppets. Um, get kids into reading again. But yeah. yeah, amazing. Thank you so much for choosing this movie. <laughs> Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you for having me on. Not a problem at all. Um, where can we find you? Who are you? What do you do? Tell us. Um, so I am an actress in Los Angeles, California. Um, I have a production company as well, and we have our own podcast. Um, Our podcast is called FEM, F-E-M-M-E, Regard Podcast. We're on all the major platforms. Um, You can follow us on Instagram at FEM Regard, and you can follow me personally on Instagram at Miss Tessa Lauren. Perfect. I'm literally going to do that right now. Um, I don't know why I haven't. Amazing. (laughs) Um, But yeah, (laughs) and and what does your uh, podcast sort of look at? What, What do you sort of explore? So we talk about independent filmmaking. Um, We started our production company a little over a year ago, so we're still, you know, very green to it, but we've learned so much. Mm. So we just, you know, share our experiences, lessons we've learned, and then we bring on industry professionals to talk a little more about, you know, how much more they've learned (laughs) and give (laughs) tips and tricks to everybody. So, yeah. Amazing. That sounds so cool. We'll definitely be checking that out. Um, Awesome. We are Why This Film. You can find us on Instagram at Why This Film. We're on Facebook at Why This Film Podcast. Uh, we are on Twitter at Why This Film. And you can always email into us with movie suggestions, comments. If you enjoyed Muppet Treasure Island, if you don't think it's the, as good as Muppet Christmas Carol, if you think it's better than Muppet Wizard of Oz, or if you've never seen any of the literary adaptations of the Muppets, get on it and then let me know what you think. That's at whythisfilmpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you to Tessa. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, Emily. It's been such a joy to rewatch this movie. The minute you suggested it, I was like, fucking yes! 
Um, <laughs> I'm glad you were as excited as I was. <laughs> yes. Um, and we will see you next time on Why This Film. Bye. Bye. We watched the film and we talked about it, but now it's time to say goodbye. We'll be back again with another movie that makes you want to ask why. <laughs>